Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Ananda alert for 15-year-old Clarendon girl. An Ananda alert has been activated for 15-year-old Abigail Peters, a ward at the Summerfield Child Care Facility in Rose Hill District, Chapleton in Clarendon, who has been missing since Friday, September 30. She is of dark complexion and medium build. Reports from the Chapleton Police are that about 5 p.m., Abigail was last seen in Port Manchester, wearing a grey and black blouse, blue jeans and a pair of black slippers. She has not been heard from since. Anyone with the whereabouts of Abigail Peters is asked to contact the Chapleton Police at 876-987-2244, Police 119 emergency number or the nearest police station. Religious groups aim to rescue vulnerable individuals linked to crime affecting Jamaica. Another religious group is moving to assist with efforts aimed at rescuing vulnerable individuals linked to green crime and violence affecting Jamaica. The World Poor Ministry launched its community outreach arm, World Reach Foundation, WRF. According to the foundation's president, Kevin Bell, the initiative is part of the effort to play a greater role in addressing some of the social issues affecting Jamaicans. Mr. Bell told reporters that the charity is on the path to engineer social healing among the youth of fertile communities in Spanish Town era to help them find peaceful ways of resolving disputes. Any Jamaican, including single parents, the indigent, children in need, trouble meals, and the elderly living in or outside Jamaica with verifiable needs in keeping the foundation's objects can benefit from the organization. The launch was held at the Church of God's Seventh Day Bema Pre Sanctuary in Willardin East Estate, St. Catherine. The World Reach Foundation is a registered charity which seeks to contribute to the holistic development of Jamaicans through psychosocial, education, and professional development projects. Concerns raised over RGD's refusal to accept copies of debt certificates. President of the National Association of Certified Environments and Funeral Director Colin Lane is raising concern about a move by the Registered General Department concerning the issuance of debt certificates. The long-standing funeral director, who is based in Manchester, has revealed that the RGD is refusing to accept copies of death certificates issued by medical doctors from relatives of the deceased. He noted that previously, this practice of accepting copies of death certificates was allowed and this would facilitate the processing of the application for cremation. He says this also allows next of kin to apply for insurance funds. Mr. Ling contends that this decision by the RGD to not accept photocopies of birth certificates is a source of major frustration. Colin Lin is also of the view that delays in obtaining the necessary documentation from the RGD poses health implication for morticians who need to know the cause of death to enable them to safely treat the bodies. Mr. Lin says his association is demanding further clarity and is hoping for an amicable solution of this issue. Fit given OK to appeal Reed Pinnock's day order. The Financial Investigations Division Fed has received the green light to appeal a Supreme Court judge's refusal to set aside an order that had stayed the multi-million dollar fraud trial of former Education Minister Will Reed and his co-accused in the parish court. The Supreme Court on Friday gave Fit permission to appeal the decision of Judge Andrea Pettigrew Collins, who had ruled that she had no authority to overturn or wear the decision of her colleague, Justice Courtney Day, who had stayed the trial. The feed was also granted an extension for filing its application. Former Caribbean Maritime University CMU President Prince Binock, Reed's wife, Sharon, and their daughter, Cheryl, and Councilor Kim Brown Lawrence of the Brownstone Division are also on trial in Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court. However, Justice Day had stalled the trial in June 2021 after Reed and Pinnock had sought leave judicial review of Chief Price Judge Chester Crook's decision that the case proceed to trial. However, the feed which is prosecuting the matter challenges the judge's decision, asking that the other be varied or set aside. But Justice Pickle Collins, in throwing out the application, indicated that it would be nonsensical to do so to finance the progress of criminal prosecution as it was possible for a finding to be made that all orders by Crooks were invalid and the matter would have to stay afresh. In the meantime, the criminal aspect of the case will be mentioned in the parish court on October 3rd. The matter was postponed in July for the court to be updated on the outcome of the application for leave to apply for a judicial review as well as a date for the judicial review with respect to Cook's decision. Reed and Pinnock had taken issue with the judge's decision in the parish court 
after Cooks reused himself for the trial, stating that there was a possible conflict of interest. He later revealed that he had attended Monroe College while Reed was head boy. The accused were arrested and charged in 2019 for allegedly diverting public funds from the Ministry of Education and CMU. Lockdown Greenville Member of Parliament for Manchester Northwestern Mikhail Phillips is calling on strong security measures, including a lockdown of Greenville and its environs, following at least six murders over 11 weeks, the latest being an alleged reprisal here. Right now, I would take a lockdown of the community because it seemed to be out of hand. With a lot of effort to bring peace into the community, where top and bottom Greenville can exist as one community, now we see where the tension between the two is coming back again, but the police seem to go inside there and find the guns, Philip told reporters on Sunday. Greenville, a socially unstable and economically depressed community, is located just a mile west of Mandeville Town Centre. Philip's comments following a drive-by shooting at the entrance of a party on Ward Avenue in Mandeville on Saturday. 28-year-old Roman Allen, otherwise Karuru, a resident of Dunsinin, near Top Greenville succumbed to the injuries he received in that attack. The shooting happened a week after Allen's birthday. The police report that about 2.15 a.m., Allen and another man, who were reported the patrons at a nightclub and lounge, were shot by the gunmen traveling in a motor car. It is suspected that Allen's murder was a reprisal for the August 5th killing of 35-year-old Adrian Nation, otherwise called Blue, and his uncle 68-year-old Leslie Levy, otherwise called Lloyd or Rustaman in Greenville. The two were buried last Friday, less than 12 hours before Allen was shot on Ward Avenue. Efforts to get a comment from the Manchester police were unsuccessful up to time of publication. But Phillips is not awaiting the official word from the police, as he told reporters that violence in Greenville poses a threat to wider Mandeville. We need a team inside there to go find the guns, because obviously there are guns inside there, and it seemed to be quite a bit. We need to get the guns out of the street, said Phillips. If it spills over, as it is going to affect the town of Mandeville too, as you would have seen on Ward Avenue. In the past, it affected the town of Mandeville, so it needs to be categorized quite early, said Phillips. Police place a restriction on entertainment events and impose a curfew in Greenville following August 5th of a murder in an effort to avoid reprisal from the attack, in which it was believed that Nation was the target. On Friday, grieving Greenville residents, some of whom displayed their anger at the funeral of the two men, warned of reprisals. Nation and Levy were interned at Oakland Memorial Garden in Dunsinane, neighboring Greenville. The police knew the perpetrators. They know the fallen producers. They need to take them out. The community right now is in fear. I mean, up to Saturday evening at 4 p.m., all the shops in the square were closed, and the community is in fear right now, he said. If it is that the police in Manchester needs help, then they at the head office in Kingston have to send the help, but don't wait until the community reaches a point of no return and more lives are lost. We keep on moving too slow, Phillips warned, as he prepared to attend a meeting with the police on Sunday afternoon. Names are being called. Police have been in there for a long time. They know who are the troublemakers, and they just need to build the cases and take them out. I mean, not kill them, but at least build these cases and get them in front of the court, Phillips said. Communities in St. Andrew Eastern to benefit from green spaces, says Williams. Several communities within the constituency of St. Andrew East are to benefit from the creation of green spaces for residents to engage in recreational and other activities. The communities are Augustown, Hermitage, African Gardens, and Colin Simit Below. Member of Parliament for the constituency, Favour Williams, made the announcement during her recent contribution to the 2022-2023 State of Constituency debate in the House of Representatives. The project will benefit approximately 10,920 residents and will cost $10 million, Williams shared. She said the project represents the continuation of the bill phase of the Zone of Special Operations Zozo that is being implemented by the Jamaica Social Investment Fund. Augustown is one of the seven Zozos in place across the island. The special security measure is credited with bringing relatively calm and a sense of security in the communities in which they are imposed. They are implemented in three phases, clear, hold, and bail. Williams explained that the design of the green spaces will include small parks, gardens, roadside greenery, and vegetation barriers. Fencing will also be installed at selected spaces. She said the upgrading should also improve the community's general environment and aesthetics. In the meantime, 
Willem said major road construction has been done and water infrastructure expanded under the bill phase of the Zoso in August Town and Colin Simit Villa. The bill phase started in earnest in February 2022 and the total amount that has been spent over the time is about 202 million to rehabilitate roadways, put in the associated drain channels, and installation of approximately 1.365 kilometers of water lines and laterals. Recon Gardens and Golden Smith Villa, the Member of Parliament, stated. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell.